Hi and welcome back to another Tech Minds video. So in this video, we're going to take a look at the brand new RSP1B SDR receiver from SDR Play, which covers from one kilohertz right up to two gigahertz. Now it's 14 bit and it's packed with built in front end filters to help keep those signals clean. Now this is the RSP1A replacement and it has some improvements over the RSP1A. Now the first and most noticeable improvement is that it now comes in a metal case as opposed to the plastic case that the RSP1A ships with. Now this doesn't only provide better protection to the delicate internals, but also helps with stray RF and acts as a form of shielding. Now in terms of functionality, the RSP1B has vastly improved noise performance at low frequencies. And recently John from SDR Play released a video performing a direct comparison between the RSP1A and the RSP1B at the same time using this same antenna wire. Now with permission from SDR Play, here's a little snippet of that video showing the comparison. Now I will link down below to the original video so you can go and watch it in its entirety. For this comparison, we're using a wire antenna. It's actually a G5 RV at some 20 meters high. And then we're splitting it between an RSP1A and an RSP1B. I'm running two instances of SDR Connect. At the top is the RSP1A and below that the RSP1B running on a Windows 11 desktop PC. And the thing you immediately see is the difference in the noise floor of the two RSPs. The RSP1A has a noise floor around minus 110 or thereabouts, whereas the RSP1B is closer to minus 125. And that means you can see a myriad of signals uh, that would otherwise be below the noise level. So if we unmute the RSP1A, all we hear is noise. If we unmute the RSP1B, We can clearly hear an NDB signal. Now with my RSP1B connected up to my NFED half-wave wire antenna, I thought it would be interesting to listen out for some NDBs on the lower frequencies. And I don't know if it was just the conditions or whether the RSP1B was really performing well, but this is the most NDBs I've heard in any given session. Okay, so that's the RSP1B and it's only a few dollars more compared to the 1A, but definitely worth the extra money as these products are just fantastic for anyone starting to get into the hobby or even if you're a veteran radio user, you will find a use for it somewhere. So next up is the release of SDR Connect Preview 2, which is SDR Play's multi-platform SDR software. Now it's designed to work with the SDR Play range of SDR receivers and Preview 2 hosts further functionality and preview one. So let's take a look through some of the new features. So the first addition that we need to look at will be down here called keypad. Now this allows us to do a direct frequency entry. You can go 7.1 and then hit megahertz. It goes directly to 7.1 or you could do 3.6, enter 3.6 megahertz. And the reason why that's not working is because we're actually locked on the 40 meter band. So I need to unclick it and then I can go back to the keypad and type 3.6 megahertz and it goes straight to 3.6. Now, if we just go up to the two meter bands, let's go here, for example. Now we can see the bandwidth here going across from 144 to 146. 
Now, what we can do is uh, if we click the little other actions up here and go to preferences, we can change our IARU region. Now, if I change it to say Americas and click OK, and then go back to two meters, you'll see now that the two meter band shows 144 to 148. So it kind of puts it in the correct bandwidth for your region. Obviously, I mean Europe, so I'm going to change that back to Europe. Click OK. And when I click two meters, it gives us 144 to 146. Now, if we also go to other bands, this is quite interesting. So for here in the UK, we've got uh, PMR446. So I can click that. It'll jump to the 446 band. There's some others here as well, like CB, NDBs, polar satellites, etc. But if I change the IARU region to say Australia, click OK, it now shows CB UHF. And that's because in Australia or those areas, they have a different set of frequencies for their UHF CB. So that's pretty useful to know. So on Preview 2 has introduced recording with IQ and you can change that over here. So you can change between audio and IQ. So that's pretty useful. And as you hit the record button, it shows you the size of the file so far. You can also choose where this file saves and that's up in preferences. And then you have this under folders, recording folders. So this is where it saves all of the files now. Obviously you can change that if you want to. Now to stop it, just click stop. And if you want to play that back, you have to first stop your RSP stream, choose IQ file and find the IQ file you want to play. Click open and then click play. And there you go, that's now playing back the IQ file from, uh, from earlier. Now something new is called asymmetrical filtering. Now it doesn't really kind of work on SSB, but it does on AM. So if I choose an AM station here, you can then click the asymmetrical filter and you can independently adjust these filters at the bottom. This is what it sounds like. <laughs> Now let's just quickly pop back to the 40 meter band and I want to show you something else which is quite cool. Well, I want to show you the notch filter and the way that with this works is like this. So if I kind of zoom in a bit and let's, uh, let's enable the notch filter. Now the notch filters can be enabled by clicking this icon here. And the great thing is you just click where you want that notch filter to be. So if I click it here and then with it highlighted green, it kind of automatically does that with the mouse over it. If I use the thumb wheel or the mouse wheel, you'll see that it starts to widen. I can actually add more, so I could add another one here. So, uh, As you can see, I've got two notch filters there. And you can actually do it out of pass band as well. So if you had a really strong station or a really strong sound that was descent in or affecting your signal, you could literally click on it. So let's say go over here. And you're applying a notch filter out of the pass band, which I think is quite fantastic. So one last feature to show you on SDR Connect, and that's the remote server feature. Now this allows you to connect to your RSP device over the network, whether it's across your local area network or over the internet. To run the server on the computer, which is the physical RSP device connected to, just navigate to the installation folder of SDR Connect using a terminal window. Then type SDR Connect space dash dash server and press enter. Now assuming your device is connected to the computer and you have a suitable antenna connected, you should now be able to connect and listen to that server from another instance of SDR Connect. Now within SDR Connect, just click the little options button and then edit the remote devices. Add your server by giving it a name and then enter its IP address. Now I didn't change the port number on the server, so I left it as default suggested value. Test the connection and if successful, you can then select the server from the device dropdown on the left of SDR Connect. 
Now you may need to press the refresh button to allow it to show in that drop down list first. Once selected, you should then be able to connect to it and start using your RSP device remotely. Now this was just a test using my local machine using the local IP address, but I wanted to try it across the internet. So John from SDR Play set up his server for me to connect to, and late last night, I connected to it and just performed some tests over the internet. And this is how it went. Okay, thank you, Yankee Mr. Paul. Tony, uh, thank you very much for the nice contact and the uh, PC again on the band. Uh, 73, Tony. Uh, this hey, Colin. Colin, get it over to you now, is it? MC. Have you got it? Hey, Colin. Um, what is it called? Is it an MC43 or something? Well, there we go, guys. That's the brand new RSP1B from SDR Play and a quick overview of the new features of SDR Connect Preview 2. Now, don't forget, SDR Connect runs on Windows, Linux, and Mac, and that also supports the ARM processor. So if you haven't tried it yet, it's worth giving it a go if you own an RSP device. Anyway, until the next video, stay safe. Thanks for watching. And I'll speak to you guys in the next video.